Welcome to yet another edition of our Beat Diabetes Books and Quotes series. And I promise you, I promise you, this will be the last time, at least for a while, we'll look at this book, Eat Fat, Get Thin. And Mark Hyman is the author. We've talked about him in uh, another book and in this book for several weeks. And uh, we're going to stop here and move on to another book and another author. But we've got to get to Mark Hyman a little bit more. By his own admission, Mark is kind of a statistic nerd. And so he loves to delve into statistics and studies and research. And that's the thing that really saved him from his prior emphasis on just total nutrition and don't worry about the carbs. High carbs is fine as long as you're getting enough nutrition. And he was into lean meats. If you look at his previous book called Blood Sugar Solution, he was talking about eat lean poultry and uh, some other types of meat, uh, not too much saturated fat. Uh, he's <laughs> he has totally changed. And by the time he writes this book, which was put out in 2016, I suppose he wrote it in 2015, um, he's changed his mind and now he's telling you fat's good for you. It's the way to go. So uh, it's interesting to just see the uh, way he changed. But in this particular video, we're going to look at some of the statistics, well, not statistics so much, but the research that he delves into and, and mentions. Uh, it's very important. I'm not quite like Mark Hyman in terms of being a statistics nerd. I, I'm kind of a big picture guy and I don't like to always get into the fine details. But Mark does. so, And some of the stuff he, he brings forth is, is quite good and quite amazing if you've never considered the low-carb, high-fat diet. So we're going to start uh, with this particular study. It is called the La uh, It was published in The Lancet by Dr. David Ludwig. Ludwig and it has to do with rats. <laughs> and uh, what are uh, the factors that affect metabolism? It says Dr. Ludwig found that changes in dietary composition produced obesity. In other words, if you get the high glycemic, in other words, stuff that just blows up into uh, blood sugar, the, the stuff that turns into sugar quickly, that's a high glycemic food, like a white potato. I mean, you eat that white potato and bam, within a couple of minutes, it's turned into sugar. And then there's the low glycemic foods that take their time. Like you eat some nuts. Well, number one, they don't have nearly so many carbs as a potato or rice would. But number two, even the carbs they do have, they're going to take their time and gradually, uh, those carbs will gradually turn into sugar. And uh, your body can process that a whole lot easier. So anyway, they fed the rats high glycemic foods, little, little rat food that uh, was not good for blood sugar, in other words. And uh, he says, uh, then they also uh, fed some other rats with uh, the lower glycemic foods that were more higher in fat, lower in carbs, but they made sure the calories stayed exactly the same. So calories are the same, but one group of rats is getting the higher fat, lower carb, the other is getting the high glycemic, high carb, low fat. So what happens? It says the rats that were fed the high glycemic diet, high in sugar and refined carbs, gained weight on an identical number of calories. Now, we've always assumed that the more calories you eat, the fatter you get, and the less calories you eat, uh, the, 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 the more you lose weight or you, you don't gain weight. But he's saying they, these researchers made sure the rats got the exact number of calories, and the rats fed the low carb, or excuse me, the high carb, low fat, they gained more weight, even though they were getting the same amount of calories. He said they gained 70% more body fat, mostly belly fat, which is the absolute worst place you ever want on a rat or on a human. So they're gaining 70% more fat on their bodies, mostly belly fat, than the rats fed the high fat diet. And they also had lower muscle mass, mass, these rats that were fed the high carb foods. They were hungrier. They had higher levels of insulin and more cardiovascular risk factors. In other words, they did terrible on a low fat, high carb diet, even though both groups had the same number of calories. So calories is not the only issue. Yeah, if you eat too many calories, you'll gain weight. But these rats ate the exact same, I mean, down to the last calorie, 
And yet, if they had the high-carb, low-fat little rat food, uh, they didn't do well at all in cardio risk, uh, cardiovascular risk factors and uh, more insulin, uh, lower muscle mass. They were hungry all the time. Just poor little rats, they didn't do well. Well, poor little humans, we humans do about the same way. He, he goes on to say on the next page, well, that's great for rats, but what about people? In a human experiment, those who ate high-fat diets had a much faster metabolism. The low-fat, high-carb diet forced all the food energy into the cells because of insulin spikes, and this slowed metabolism. The group that had the higher-fat diet had a faster metabolism. So you want a fast metabolism. You don't want a slow, sluggish metabolism. And uh, again... The, uh, the low-fat group had the sluggish metabolism. Mark Hyman makes the point that high-fat foods make you crave even more carbs. High-carb foods, you want more carbs. Eat a lot of fat, you don't need so much more food. He talks about a group of school children, school kids, and they gave them a choice between you can eat as many potato chips as you want, or you can eat, one group ate, ate potato chips as much as they wanted, and the other group ate cheese wedges as much as they wanted. So <laughs> the, a, a total uh, allowance of whatever you want, you get. But one group had to eat potato chips and the other group got cheese wedges. Well, what do you suppose they found out? He says the kids in the potato chip group ate three times as many calories as the kids in the cheese group. They ate far more, even though fat has more calories than carbs do. The kids that were given the carbs ended up eating much more than the kids, kids that were given unlimited cheese wedges. Well, that's how carbs are and sugars. They just want to make, they make you want to eat more and more and more and more. And we talk about carb addiction. Whoever has a cheese addiction, whoever has a steak addiction, I don't know of anybody. We'll eat it because we know it's good for us and it won't affect our blood sugar much, but we don't, we're not addicted. And if someone gives me a big old monster steak, I won't eat it all. I wouldn't be able to. But I could do that with uh, high-carb foods for sure. Dr. Hyman says, when taken as a whole, the science shows us a clear pattern of evidence that carbs make you fat, while fat makes you thin. Rewind, say it again, carbs make you fat, while fat makes you thin. Carbs and sugars move you toward diabetes eventually. It'll take a while. And some people can get by eating carbs and sugars for 50 years before the doctor says you've got diabetes. But it doesn't happen when you eat high fat. He says foods like white rice, potatoes, and sugary beverages promote obesity and related diseases. Fat like nuts, oily fish, and olive oil, and even foods high in saturated fats promote weight loss and reduce reduce risk of these diseases when you cut out the sugar and the refined carbs. Well, that's what everybody's becoming aware of. There are some holdouts. And yeah, there are some doctors that write books and they're on YouTube and they'll tell you, don't you dare eat fat. It'll make you diabetic. Eggs will make you diabetic. Meat will make you diabetic. Eggs will give you cancer. Meat will give you cancer. And they'll just blah, 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 blah. But the evidence and the research shows the other. Yeah, they can come up with their own little research. I mean, if you search hard enough, you'll find some studies somewhere that will confirm what you believe, and that's what these folks do. But the major research uh, shows differently. He talks about one big study that changed everything. He says it was a comprehensive review in 2014 led by Dr. Rajiv Chowd Chowdhury. He looked at 72 of the best studies so far on fat and heart disease. In other words, it was a study on studies. I'm going to study studies. And he looked at 72 different studies, just grabbed them from everywhere, that involved 600,000 people from 18 different countries. And Hyman says he came to the conclusion there was no link between so, uh, total fat and sat or saturated fat and heart disease. Just no link. We've been told <laughs> saturated fat. You eat that beef. You eat that meat. And boy, you're headed for a heart attack. He says... This guy studied all the studies, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, uh, dozens of studies, 72. There's just no link there. 
All right, well, let's sum this up. Dr. Hyman says, let's review. He says, saturated fats in your blood that cause heart attacks come from eating sugar and carbs, not fat. The thing that causes the heart attacks are the sugar and the carbs. He says, saturated fats that come from dairy and butter show a reduced risk of heart disease. Can you believe that? He says, saturated fats from dairy and butter. They lower, did you get that? They lower your risk of heart disease. Now, he doesn't even really like dairy much, and uh, you give him a chance to talk, he'll, he'll find ways to criti uh, criticize it. But high-fat dairy, like cream, like butter, it does not give you heart disease. In fact, it lowers your risk of heart disease. He says omega-6 fats from vegetable oils show no benefit. They may increase risk of heart attack. So vegetable oils, not good. But he says the omega-6 that comes from poultry, eggs, and beef seem to be protective. And he says omega-3 fats from fish are the most protective. Finally, he says this, the conclusion, avoid most vegetable oils. Eat more butter, fish, chicken, eggs, and meat, and stay away from sugar and carbs. And then I love this line, boy, did we get this wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. We got it wrong, folks, and people are starting to see it. But there are holdouts, and there are people that will tell you, no, 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 it cannot be possibly right. Well, Dr. Hyman is kind of a late convert. It took him a while to come to this conclusion, and he seems to have done it in the last decade or so. But he's come there because, as he says, he's a statistics nerd. You know, uh, we come there from different places in this world. Dr. Hyman and I could hardly be more different. Uh, he's kind of a new agey guy. And he talks about you need to relieve stress and the way you do it is through chanting and meditation and yoga. <laughs> well, that is not the way I relieve stress. I pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. But uh, we both come to the same conclusion on this area, that it's the carbs and the sugars that are going to get you. The research says it. It's, there are many voices rising up and saying it. Yeah, I know I'm not a doctor. I'm just a preacher. But there are doctors saying it now. Dr. Hyman is a doctor. Dr. Fung is a doctor. Dr. Eric Westman is a doctor. There are numerous doctors rising up and saying the same thing. We got it wrong. To quote Dr. Hyman once again, boy, did we get this wrong. Sadly, uh, it has cost people lives. It has cost people the quality of their last years. Very, very sad. We gambled on an unproven assumption that carbs and sugars get a free pass, but boy, stay away from that meat. And boy, did we get this wrong. I want you to know that I have another YouTube channel. It's called by my name, Dennis Pollock. And on this channel, my wife, Benedicta, and I teach the basics of the Bible in a simple, user-friendly fashion. Normally, on Mondays, I post what I call a video devo, in which I take various Bible topics and share scriptures to help you understand the subject a little better. On Thursdays, I post Bible studies by Benedicta and me as we sit at our dining room table and discuss various portions of the scriptures. We cover book studies and Bible character studies. So catch me on Mondays sharing devotional talks and Benedicta and me on Thursdays as we study the greatest book in the world, the Bible. Check in the description to find a link to our Bible teaching channel, which is called by my name, Dennis Pollock.